home of the 2024 games. Gymnasts across the world hope to stand on that podium, but tonight in Tampa, one woman who already has Olympic gold is back on the competition floor. So is her Olympic teammate who's looking for her first national title here. But after night one, a pair of rising stars are in the way. One making her senior debut at this event. And another who's been here before, but perhaps is finally ready to step up onto the big stage. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2022 Bufos U.S. Gymnastics Championships. And welcome everyone to Tampa. Another warm evening here along the Gulf Coast inside Emily Arena. That's where the action's taking place. Normally it's reserved for the lightning of the NHL, but this week the best gymnast from across America trying to win a national championship, and it's all on the line tonight. It is night two here in Tampa for the women. And hi, everybody, Terry Gannon, along with the Olympic champs, Tim Daggett and Nastia Luke. And, and guys, we've gotten used to seeing Simone Biles win national championships. She's won seven of the past eight. Simone is not here, not competing, stepping away for a while from high-level competitions. But 2024 in Paris, not out of the question. So we'll have to see what the future brings. There are athletes, Nastia, who are here, who we didn't see in Tokyo at the Olympics, but are hoping to make an impact, and boy, they are. Well, they absolutely are. Shailise Jones is leading the competition after night one and had an incredible performance, showed so much confidence and consistency. She will have to repeat the same night that she had night one. And Connor McLean, she has really had a difficult year this last year, and she has handled it so well. The mental toughness that she has shown here, absolutely spectacular. Once again, consistency is going to be key all night long. Whoever can have the best meet is going to come out on top. Handle that pressure as well. The national championship on the line tonight. There are those who've handled the pressure before, Tim. We saw some names who are in the mix here compete in Tokyo at the Olympics. Yeah, and you know, at the Olympics, you hope that everything goes perfectly, but nothing ever goes perfectly. And a person that really emerged as a leader of that team is Jordan Childs. She stepped up in a big way and helped Team USA to win that silver team medal. Another athlete who had a magical ending to her Olympic Games was Jade Carey. Unbelievable performance, was eighth in the all around, and then on the final day of the Olympic gymnastics competition, got gold on the floor exercise. So big picture, everybody thinking about Paris 2024, but this would be a big step along that road. National championship on the line tonight here in Tampa. Here in Tampa Bay and inside Amelie Arena, they're getting set. It is night number two, national championship on the line. And with us, John Roethlisberger, the four-time U.S. all-around national champ. John, how are you? I am good, Terry. Thank you very much. And as always, I'm going to talk about scoring. The code of points for gymnastics is a thick, complicated book. But we're going to give you the Cliff Notes version. Keep it simple. Gymnastic scoring is basically made up of two parts, the execution score and the difficulty score. We're going to look at the scoring graphic that we use for each gymnast. And right here, we're going to use Jade Carey as an example. And we're going to start with difficulty, that number right there. Difficulty for gymnastics, the gymnast competing tonight, starts at two points just for doing the most basic skills on each event. On top of that two points are added the values of the eight most difficult skills that that gymnast does. Each skill is given a value. They add those together. They add it to that two points we just mentioned, and that is the gymnast difficulty score. Now let's look at the execution portion of the gymnastics score. This number right here, Jade Carey, 8.15 for her floor exercise routine. That number starts at a perfect 10 for each of the athletes. From that 10 are subtracted de deductions like form breaks, steps on the landings. Artistry is a big one in women's gymnastics. And of course, falls from the apparatus are the biggest deduction. Whatever's left of that 10.0 is added to the difficulty score. And that is the gymnast final score. Now let's look back at night one at three gymnasts with the highest difficulty scores in the competition. Connor McLean had the top score. Jay Carey had the second highest difficulty score. Shylees Jones, who is winning the competition, actually had the third highest difficulty score. But when you go down to the next row, execution, gymnastics, it's a risk reward sport. You're going to take big risks. You got to execute. And Shylees Jones executed in the number one spot. And that is the reason why you see first right there 
and that's why she is in first. So keep an eye on that throughout the competition. Difficulty score versus execution, and that is going to be who balances those could be your winner. John, thanks. Great breakdown as we get set for Shilise Jones. Going to start on balance beam. The 20-year-old from Auburn, Washington, moved back home to the Seattle area. Has been through so much in the last year. Lost her dad back in December of 20. 21 and, and talked about how close they were and how much of an inspiration he has been and here she is perhaps on the verge of winning an all-around title just getting underway tonight and i tell you what so impressed with shalice the entire time she's been in tampa big big test right here standing arabian front and just like the entire meet has been going for this young woman perfect oh boy and that is such a tricky combination that side aerial immediately into a back layout somersault she actually fell on that same skill a few weeks ago at the u.s classic when you fall it is a full point in deduction, so that comes out of the execution. The top five gymnasts in the all-around were all within a point and a half within each other, and starting on the balance beam is, is never an easy feat, but just the dismount right here. Great recovery, though. But not the start she was looking for to open up night two. Yeah, you know, at the beginning of the training week, we saw her in training in the first day of competition, and she was just so calm, so confident. But the thing about the national championships, two days of competition, and the scores are combined. So once again, consistency is going to be so crucial. And she started the routine so well. Normally, as, as Tim, you mentioned, right from the top, big, big test right here. So difficult and so perfect. That was great. <laughs> but here, very tricky, and it's in combination. So errors get magnified. One skill into another, and looked like her chest maybe was just a little bit too low. Wasn't exactly prepared for when that was going to finish. She had an 8 tenth cushion coming into day two of this competition. She just gave one point away, though. Well, the lead was small, too. We talked about it, and, and Jade Carriage getting set to go on beam. She was in fifth place, heading into night number two, just about a point and a half off the lead. So there's not much margin for error. Well, not only is it a point fall, but, you know, any little mistake that you have when you're trying to save it, all of that is being deducted. So, unfortunately, it's going to be well over a point in deductions right there. But she needs to, she really needs to turn the page right here and move on to her next event. It's not over till it's over. <laughs> That's something that you certainly learn as a gymnast. So just to follow up on what John was talking about, we're just gonna help you out with the green, the yellow, and the red. You don't wanna have red, obviously. That's below average on the scores. It's all based on recent international meets. You want to be in green. So Jade Carey, the 22-year-old from Phoenix, and you talk about confidence as you look at the number for Shailese Jones in red there, 12.45. So tough start in terms of the opening score. But Jade comes to this now national championship as an Olympic gold medalist. That was on floor. Here she starts on being. You know, just to be announced, as you just yeah. said, Terry, I mean, it is a whole different ball game coming into the national championships. Even though she competed here last year, it's a whole different feeling when all eyes are on you now. Three skills in a row. And they're all acrobatic, and that means tricky. One of my favorite combinations right here. Oh. So good. Perfect, yep. Yeah. You know, for so long, Jade was really thought of as a floor and vaulting specialist. In 2017, she was world silver medalist on both of those events, but she wanted to do the all-around at the Olympic Games. She got to do that. 
And she said, finishing eighth in the world at the Olympic Games in the all-around, one of her greatest accomplishments of her life. And by the way, she said, I never thought in a million years I would be competing at least on the uneven bars and balance beam at the Olympic Games. Dismount, two back handsprings into a double pike. Great dismount, just that step on the landing. Good start for Jade. Starting on the balance beam is probably the most nerve-wracking event to start on. Her dad, Brian, her coach, and what a year she had at Oregon State as well. The Pac-12 all-around champ. <laughs> There's that series that we talked about at the beginning. So three elements in a row. You have to be so precise right there. And you Beautiful. tell me, are these toes or are they talons? Because when you're on balance beam, you could crack a walnut with those things. Look at her squeezing. No movement at all. Fantastic. And that dismount, two bag handsprings. And what the judges are really looking for, chest up on the landing right here. Really good. Just the step back. So the numbers should be pretty good. And we'll get that number in a moment, but over to vault right now and one of the young stars in second place going into night number two, Connor McLean, the 17 year old, Las Vegas and Cross Lanes, West Virginia. Making that big step up this week here in Tampa. Without question, she's gonna do a double twisting laid out Yurchenko. Very powerful athlete. Oh. That was gorgeous. Maybe one of the most powerful vaults I've seen Jordan do. She just ricochets off the table and a smile. And, and she's actually capable of doing an even more difficult vault. Look at the power that she gets from the table right here, stretched open. Look at the body position, just gorgeous. Just pipe down her hips a little bit. And that's why she had that huge hop back. So will likely be a lower score than day one. Misspoke and called her Jordan. This is Connor. Shame on me, because that was spectacular. So has the season been, and, and it hasn't been easy, including a concussion right before the U.S. Classic, but a win at the Winter Cup. There have been some high-level events in between Tokyo, the Olympics, and here, 14.35. So with that, she came into night number two in second. She has passed. Shilise Jones. Sky Blakeman now getting set as well. 17 year old from Frisco, Texas, in sixth place after night number one. Should do the exact same vault we just saw Connor do. Maximum starting score 15.0 on this vault. Very good. Really good. Didn't quite get the height off of the table as Connor did, but beautiful body position in the air, no pike down, just that step, and the smile, most importantly. <laughs> no doubt. So important to jam those arms right onto that table and then to not absorb at all. And she does absorb just a little bit in her shoulders, and that takes away from some of the potential height that she could get. Coming back from injury at the Olympic trials last year, in a position to maybe make the Olympic team, but had an elbow injury and eventually surgery, seven months of rehab. Range of motion was tough, but back at the high level now, competing. And take a look at what took place. You think about last year and all that these athletes went through, guys, mm. trying to make the Olympic team, the U.S. championships, then the trials. And that was moments before the Olympic trials were ready to begin. And I was right there all, all with you two and just watching it, it oh, heartbreaking. Talked to us earlier this week about how difficult it's been coming back from that, but it has gotten back to this level. 14.3 in green. Jake Carey, 13.3. Yeah, and you see that 7.5. That's, that's a pretty big number of, of execution deductions, remember. That artistry is very critical. 
You know, I think a lot of people typically think of artistry on the floor exercise, but it's just as important on the balance beam. All right, Jordan Childs getting set to go. The 21-year-old from Vancouver, Washington. We saw her star in Tokyo at the Olympics earlier. Cecile Landy, her coach, talked to John. She's obviously had an unbelievable year. The Olympics, the tour, through a whole college season. And then to have the competition she had night one. Does, does she surprise you? Does she ever cease to amaze you? I Yes and no, because I've seen her change. I've seen her mature in a year and a half. Since Winter Cup 2021, I think we all saw a new Jordan. And very consistent, very confident, and is just showing. And NCAA has helped her so, so much on that, too. Competing every weekend, I think today just felt like another day. Is there any question in her mind that she, she wants to go to, to Paris in 2024? No, no, she wants to go. She already has a plan. <laughs> Speaking of going to Paris, I can't let you leave without asking the question. No one has heard definitively that Simone will not try for Paris. Uh, is there any, any insight you can give us on her plans, and have you seen her in the gym? I've seen her. She's come to say hi, um, but, you know, it's not my story to tell. So when she's ready, she'll say what she has to say. If she wants to come back, we're more than happy to help. I'm sure there are a lot of people that would love to see that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with that, as a matter of fact. Those two got so close, too, Simone Biles and Jordan Childs in the run-up to the Olympics. And then, of course, it was Jordan Childs who stepped in in a big way in the team event. Yeah, and that was extremely crucial for her. And I think that moment that she had there really helped her level of confidence know. And as Cecile mentioned, she can compete at any given moment. And today is just another day. Here we go. Uh, boy, it's been great so far. So calm looking. Really, really calm. Not not fake calm, like real calm. When I think a lot has to do with the fact that competing every single weekend in college, it really helps gain that experience and that calmness. When you're out there on the competition floor, thousands of people, the adrenaline, the nerves, you don't gain experience unless you compete. <laughs> time after time after time, and this has really helped her. Wow. Yeah, I think this is the most perfect routine I've ever seen Jordan do on balance beam. Big extension on her leaps. Judges are always looking for a complete split, 180 degrees in the air. Just an easy dismount for Jordan, but uber hard for everybody else. Double pike and the wow. smallest. That's a one-tenth hop and pretty good body position. Wow. You know, I said balance beam is typically the most difficult event to start on because of nerves, but not for Jordan. Star now for UCLA, but back at the elite level. Yeah, she told me she'll be taking all of her classes this fall online. Here's that opening series pass. So three elements in a row, just like we saw from Jade Carey. Just perfection, really, as if she is going down a line on the floor exercise. So powerful. Double pike, she's actually capable and has competed a full twisting double somersault off beam. Doesn't need that now, though. So there are individual apparatus titles on the line tonight as well. So we'll keep track of those. Obviously, four different apparatus, four rotations, and an all-around champ to crown, too. We'll get that number for Jordan Childs in a moment for that effort on balance beam. But short time ago, Kayla DiCello, the 18-year-old from Boyd's, Maryland, who's headed to the University of Florida. Not before tonight, though, closes out. Came into the second night in fourth place. This her effort short time ago on uneven bars. Oh boy. And missed that connection right there. You saw her toes try to get to the bar, but she was just a little too low in that handstand. Good recovery here. Gorgeous. Jaeger in a piped position. Great pack salto right there. Judges really looking for the handstands as well. Beautiful release. Oh. 
Well, twisting double, I call that a stick. It was great, but she was a little bit better night one. Felt a little rushed yes. throughout the entire routine, but good start for Kayla. Was well, an alternate in Tokyo, but did go to the World Championships and won a bronze medal in the all-around there. 13.5, the number for bars. Also earlier, a 16-year-old from Allen, Texas, in 10th place heading into the second night, Caitlin Jong, who is the 2021 U.S. Junior all-around champ. And out on floor exercise. And boy, can she do a lot of hard gymnastics across the board. Every single event, she has super high difficulty. We had a chance to talk with her, and I said, so Caitlin, what was it, what's it like to look at your name and see that you are the junior national champion? Do you realize the number of athletes that bear that title and what they went on to be coming, she said, I have no idea. <laughs> I just it's compete. better that way. Yeah, exactly. Well, it was an amazing routine, as I said, super high level of difficulty. But you know, she's kind of a little rough in spots and transitions. She's very young, though, and has time to pick up on that. You see the 7.4 in execution, a lot of deductions. Guys, how about the number for Jordan Childs? What do you think, Nastia? I think it was a great start for her. You see that execution, 8.05, almost two tenths deduction. Something to work on, but what a great confident start from Jordan. In third place right now, after one rotation, though, Connor McLean on top. She's moved from second to first. Do you remember the Beijing Olympics 2008? I think you do. A little bit. Yeah, I think you remember. Alicia Sacramone Quinn, one of the stars there, doing things like that on vault, but now a different role for her, different structure for USA Gymnastics for the women's high performance. She is one of three people in charge, strategic lead, and she's standing by with John right now. Yeah, thanks, Terry. You have a three-member leadership group at USA Gymnastics for the women's program. Dan Baker is the developmental lead. Chelsea Memo, the technical lead. You're the strategic lead. Tell us about your role. I'm basically the ideas woman. So I, it's my job to basically come to the table with ways to modernize the program that maybe we haven't tried in the past and just do anything we can to help better these athletes physically, mentally, emotionally. So you're younger than a lot of the coaches out on this floor that you are leading. How do you navigate that? I think it's about mutual respect. I'm not coming in telling them how to do their job. I'm just there to give them advice and guide them how we can get our nation to grow and get back on that medal podium. You mentioned the medal podium. Silver at the last Olympics. Gold is the gold standard for the USA women's program. Is there pressure? Do you feel the pressure to get them back on top again? We definitely feel the pressure to be back on top, but I think every athlete naturally wants to win. So if we can help achieve that goal by making some changes here in the program and let these athletes do what they're capable of doing, I think we can achieve that. Your first championships in your new role, give the athletes a grade so far. Athletes got an A minus day one. They were fantastic. I want to see a little bit more in the face, the smiles, having more fun out there, but their gymnastics was fantastic. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Alicia. Back to you, Terry. Yeah, it was A minus. Is it slipping right now, guys? I, I think they've been pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> Chelsea Memo, another name that you uh, certainly know, the technical lead for the Women's High Performance Program for USA Gymnastics, and Dan Baker, developmental lead. So it's three people now, not just one, leading the way. Yeah, you know, I think it was the best choice. I think just one person, it was kind of a target, and they kind of had, you know, a big, a big target on their back. Olympic teammates talking right there. Long way to go. Connor McLean on top of the standings here after the opening rotation night two. Back here at the UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championships in Tampa. So through five rotations. Remember, night one carries over to night two in terms of the numbers. We've got three more rotations. Connor McLean atop the leaderboard as we take you to vault right now. Caitlin Jong in 10th place. Same ball we've seen that double twisting Yurchenko. That was actually pretty good. A little bit better than I think she did night one. Rising junior in high school. Still has two more years in high school before she gets that degree. Yeah, and she All of her exercises. So we'll get that number in a moment. Uh, Jade Carey getting set. What an experience it was in Tokyo. For more on that, let's join John again. Yeah, thanks, Terry. You know, I spoke to Brian Carey during one of the training sessions, and with visible emotion on his face, he, he walked me through the roller coaster they had in, in Tokyo during those finals. And Jade Carey was the prohibitive favorite, heavy favorite to win the gold medal on the vault until everything went wrong on her first, first attempt. She still says she doesn't know exactly what went wrong, but with that vault, she lost her opportunity for gold there. He said they went back to the hotel room and for hours they just processed what happened. But the next day they went to the gym and he went up to his daughter and said, Jade, yesterday was the worst day of your life, but today could be the greatest day of your life. And of course, the rest is history. And what a routine it was on floor exercise in Tokyo. Yeah, and you know, the mental strength that it took to not only just come out here and do the best floor routine of your entire life, but even just to be able to face her fears, her everything that she went through just the day before, she said it was truly the best day of her life. Unbelievable. I, I got chills through that whole report. It just uh, was really magical, to say the least said something else that she's realized from that moment now people are actually telling her how inspirational it was and she thought I was so embarrassed I yeah. never thought that that moment would be inspiring people so she thought maybe one day she'd be able to finally get around to watching exactly what happened on that vault but not yet yeah I, I asked her I said so what did you trip did you just mess your steps up? And she says, I have no idea. And I said, uh, have you ever looked at it? And she said, no. I said, will you look at it? And she says, well, maybe when I'm totally done with gymnastics. And I think that's probably a good thing. You know what? I, I doubt she does. Yeah. Why, why, why relive that? At that point, it doesn't matter, right? right? Yeah. But now, every time she steps up, gets ready to do a floor exercise routine, she does so as the Olympic gold medalist. And it, it can't be anything like that. Pretty cool. Yeah. Except for the weight. Yeah. Yeah, that, right. that doesn't change either. As an athlete, that's, uh, you know, we. Oh, it's the hardest thing. You're just so ready to go. And yeah. especially when you are first up on that event, sometimes there are some judges' delays, but now everyone's kind of looking around, yeah. you know, waiting to go. Meanwhile, the number for Caitlin Jong on vault, 13.85. And, you know, we talked with her, and she had a great line about the Olympians from Tokyo. And she says, unbelievable how mentally strong the Olympians were. I would have freaked out. There were all of these different obstacles that they had to deal with to overcome. Certainly dealing with the withdrawal of Simone Biles and then coming back from that vault and winning gold on this event. Now Jade Carey set on floor. Brand new floor team for her.
go. Your reigning Olympic gold medalist on the floor exercise. And boy, has she come out of her shell, Nasi? Can you believe it? Oh, it, it's like it's a, we were talking to a different person. It is just so great to see. You know, she said she finally loves gymnastics again, and college really helped her. It's just I I just get overwhelmed with the sense of joy. She just is so happy. And not that she wasn't, you know, joyful and happy before, but there is just a whole different level of happiness here. Get that score in a moment, but over to uneven bars and Connor McLean getting set. The 17 year old who has taken the lead here, but obviously ups, downs, it, it's never all smooth. Back in December, Connor lost her dad, Mark, and her grandmother the same week to COVID, and they were so close and certainly thinks about him throughout. Mom Lorinda watching family and the leotard with his initials. M.M. Mark McLean and set to go on uneven bars, which was if you're looking for one area on the opening night, this this was the one that gave her some trouble. Yeah, absolutely. She definitely struggled on the uneven bars, and that was actually where she also had the concussion right before the U.S. Classic competition, but she needs to put all of that inside her now and do one skill at a time, just like she knows how to do it. She has really a very tricky combination. Gorgeous. Oh, this is great. Very tricky right here. Deals with it. Big release. Wow. Close to the bar, but. A little close, but connected it. Missed that connection day one. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. That was, that was fingertips <laughs> for sure. Double pike, dismount. Wow. Small step. Definitely significantly better. And will be a much higher starting value. That difficulty because she did that connection right there that she missed. By the way, your dad can still move out there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> your mom and dad are coaches. Also probably gave him a little bit of a heart attack on that last skill, catching with it, her fingertips. But look at this connection. So a little bit arms there and some form break here, but that connection she missed. Night one. And look right here. Look at her finger. Oh, that oh. was just, just barely. Definitely heart skips a beat a little bit, both as an athlete and a coach. Double pike right here, chest up, working on obviously a more difficult dismount, but. <laughs> it's, it's a smile of relief right oh, now. Too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, she said, you know, in the past, she always tried to be a people pleaser. And she says, now I'm doing it for myself. This is for me. She said it's a lot more enjoyable that way, less stressful. Success this year so far, too. So confidence from that coming in. I mentioned the win at the Winter Cup. There was another event that she won as well. And so coming here to the national championship, she had some momentum coming in, despite the concussion we mentioned before the U.S. Classic not long ago, a few weeks ago. John, do you have more on what we just saw? Yeah, you know, it's boring, Terry, but handstands, 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 and it's not boring to the judges, but here's an example. Watch this as she does a toe-on full pirouette where her second hand gets on right there. Look at this angle, and I know Tim's gonna love that one. She's almost 45 degrees from the handstand, and that is a major error. Any further than that, it's a 5 tenth deduction. In between the 30 and the 45, it's going to be one of these babies. So that is what you got to look for on uneven bars. Yeah, you're right, John. It, it is boring, and it's hard for the, the non-gymnastics person to understand, well, well why that, would that be a deduction? It's just they're looking for, protect, for perfection. So 14.05, it's about three quarters of a point higher than night one, though. So there was improvement, there's no doubt about it. Keep it here. Uneven bars and Sky Blakely, 17 year old from Texas, getting ready to go. Committed to the University of Florida, but perhaps not until Paris 2024. She'll join her sister Sloan there. Beautiful start. Great combination. And 
once again right there as John was mentioning that handstand very low. And not only was it low in deduction, but it throws you off for that next skill. This is beautiful though, inverted giants, double front. She's a wonderful gymnast, just beautiful lines. You know, it was such a heartbreak to watch her at the Olympic trials injure that elbow. She completely tore a ligament off the bone, had seven months of rehab, trying to get the range of motion back. She looks fa fabulous to me. And remember, initially, she was too young to compete at the Olympics, the Tokyo Games at least. Then they were pushed back a year, so she was right there in the mix. And by the way, Tim reminded her often, but you know, you could have made the Olympics. <laughs> uh, I'm was, sure she loves you for that. <laughs> she was well aware. Oh, golly, yes. So beautiful dismount, but the thing I loved is this inverted giant swing, so nice and great power, super technique as well on that dismount, drives her heels. Yeah, Nastia, you mentioned the handstand again, and this one, this could be critical right here. Watch where her second hand gets on, and let's see where the angle is. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Obviously, we moved a little bit past it, but bent in the hips, the angle of the handstand that she missed. Nastia, I'll let you judge that one. You are a master at the handstands. Maybe you can give us some insight on how to, how to hit those, but that looks like a big deduction. Your thoughts? You know, sometimes, fortunately for the athletes, this moves so quickly that when the judges are watching it, it could just kind of be almost, you know, personal kind of in the moment. I think obviously at least it was at that 45, if not even below. Yeah, I think they're going to take five on that. And, you know, the interesting thing is the FIG, the governing body of sport worldwide, is experimenting with trying to have computers and, and AI be able to record things like angles on the uneven bars, and they're really trying to get to that. Makes sense. Look at the number, 13.85 for Jade Carey, two-tenths lower than the opening night on floor exercise for the Olympic gold medalist. Meanwhile, Jordan Childs set on floor. gymnastics in that routine and she has still got it she introduced a new tumbling run in her first pass you know one of my favorite stories about jordan in the lead up for the olympics which was long we would ask all the athletes so do you ever think about going to the olympics do you ever say it out loud do you talk to people about it and almost everyone would say no no i, I just throw it out push it out of my mind instantly she told me at least three three to four times a day which is more accurate <laughs> for every single athlete. <laughs> College star in Westwood, UCLA now too. Newfound excitement and purpose. Source Stevenson, you have more? 
Well, Jordan Childs enters the competition this weekend with a new superpower, and it's probably not what you're thinking. It's not that of a hero on TV. It's the result of a series of experiences. And Terry, as you and the crew touched on, Jordan was called into action in Tokyo when her teammate Simone Biles withdrew from the Olympics. Jordan then nailed two routines she did not even prepare for. Jordan Childs' superpower is the ability to handle adversity. Before Jordan left for the U.S. Championships, her coach told her, you can do anything. Her coach went on to say, you've been through a lot. And Jordan then nodded her head and said, yeah, you're right. I have been through a lot. That nod was almost a realization that she's got this. That charge has now allowed Jordan to come into the second day of the U.S. Championships with the mindset of whatever happens, happens. Still dancing, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the floor exercise routine hasn't ended yet. Waiting for the number. 13.9 uneven bars, and that's in green. So positive for Sky Blakely. Shailene Jones trying to bounce back a bit after that opening effort over on beam as we continue from Tampa. Let's see. So the number for Jordan Childs, 13.9 in green there, floor exercise. Yes, yeah, and it continues. Having a good time tonight, I think. You know, and that's something that actually Jordan and Jade both said that they wanted to bring a little bit more fun to the competition floor. And so in fourth place, heading in, Kayla DiCello set on balance beam. Back dive to a handstand. We used to see that from a lot of gymnasts. It has been devalued for the code for 2022 through 2024. And look at that. She does that as well as anybody in the world. It may not look that difficult. Go ahead, just push the coffee table out of the way and give that a try. Just go around once, though. No, thank you. So far, pretty calm and confident big test right here great Kayla so many great moments in the sport but you know not quali qualifying for the Olympics that was you know it, it, very very challenging she said going to the world only two or three months later was wonderful and having success she said it made me know that, yeah, all the hard work, it does pay off. Just the dismount, double tuck. Big hop forward, and that chest was pretty low on that landing. You see that execution, 8.0. Headed to the University of Florida directly from here, as a matter of fact. Four right. suitcases and all. That's it, yeah. Four, it was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Four suitcases. Shiley you took Jones. four suitcases for this gig, didn't you? <laughs> Floor exercise here. coming into tonight with some problems opening up on balance beam. Got to get it back right here. Big tumbling. a great way to move on from the fall she had on her first event on the balance beam and she needs to stay on this track now for her next two events.
Gosh, am I right? I mean, most people think she can accomplish big time oh, things. Absolutely, and she's always been capable of doing that. One of the best athletes I've seen on the floor. She just has battled a little bit of inconsistency throughout her career. We saw that vanish day one, and there's a great comeback there with that floor routine. I mean, some amazing things we just saw with that floor routine from Shailise Jones, the 20-year-old from the Seattle area. So we'll see what that does numbers-wise. Where she moved in the standings as we continue in the national championships on NBC and Peacock. So they move the mats around, get set for the next rotation after six rotations. Got two more left. Suni Lee, the Olympic all-around gold medalist in the house here in Tampa. Great to see her. And certain things come with that title, as, as you know. <laughs> you got to throw out the first pitch back at home at a Twins game. This is how you do it, with style. It, not just standing on the mound, but and now a star at Auburn as well. And one of her Olympic teammates, Grace McCallum, standing by with Zora. Yeah, I'm here with the Olympic silver medalist. They just showed your teammate, Suni, throwing out the first pitch. Have you done anything like that since the no, Olympics? I haven't. I mean, they asked me, but I was, like, so busy with everything going on that I didn't get to. Well, you've been busy because you've been at college. What was the highlight of your first year at Utah? I think just everything about the school I absolutely loved. I, like, fell in love with the state and the people and the programs and the coaching staff and just everything about it. It's been about a year since the Olympics. How would you sum up that experience? It's been a whirlwind of a year. It's been so different than what I'm used to, but it's so amazing. We were chatting how it's different seeing you as a spectator and not a competitor. When will we see you back on that elite stage? I don't know. I mean, maybe soon. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> She's not spilling any secrets with us. You've got two of your teammates out here, though, Jade Carey, Jordan Childs. How have they looked? They looked amazing. I'm so proud of them for coming back out here. I mean, like, kudos to them. That's awesome. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Terry. Zora, thanks. And um, Suni Lee, we expect to see her, hope to see her back at the elite level next year while competing for Auburn as we continue here at the National Championships in Tampa in a moment. Two rotations in tonight, six rotations in all, and two more left. And Connor McLean, who started the night in second place, currently has that lead. Shailise Jones in second after what we saw on floor a moment ago, and Jordan Childs rounding out the top three. Still not a great distance between those. So, still open. I think Jordan Childs having some fun tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah. You talk about embracing the moment and, and the stage. Well, and that, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. Jade and Jordan both, they said, you know, on the collegiate level, when they're out there competing with their college teammates, they are literally doing this the entire competition. Here, a little bit different, but they wanted to bring that energy and the excitement and enthusiasm to the competition floor here. And they told the girls right before they marched out, this is what we're going to do. You guys are welcome to join, but you don't have to. <laughs> Among other things, different rules amateur-wise in college now for athletes. So we're seeing more women go to college and compete and then come back to the elite level now. You know, and it's so impressive because the requirements in collegiate gymnastics versus the elite competition is so much more, it's more difficult in elite. You basically are doing half the number of skills at times and so it's so impressive for them to be able to be back out here on the competition floor performing their olympic routines vault charlotte booth 15 year old claremont florida all right there you go she snuck that second fall in there from the gym of olympian brandy johnson John, I wondered often what the judges go through here. Take us through this. Well, you know how I told you guys at the beginning, I like to keep it simple. Well, it, well, here's the reason why. The code of points is complicated. When you see these judges working on their paper, this is what they are working on. Oh. All of those squiggles, I'm not sure if that'd be hieroglyphics or what that would be, but those are symbols for each of the skills that the gymnast does. With and then deductions. at the bottom, you can see the little deductions, the little slashes, one-tenth, one-tenth, one-tenth. I can't tell you what that routine is right there, but that is what they are doing. It is a process, and it is a complicated one. 
Can you make heads or tails of that? No. <laughs> oh, it, it is. It's a different language. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have to take, obviously, a bunch of courses, and, you know, it's, it's almost like learning a different language. <laughs> after, after writing all that down, 13-6 for Charlotte Booth, by the way. Sometimes they're just planning where they're going to go to dinner, though. <laughs> I don't think so. Jordan Childs next on vault. Big, powerful, double twisting. Laid out your Chango. Beautiful. It's almost as if she just clicked the that was easy button. Yeah, that one was easy for her. <laughs> But it's all business right here. Gets tremendous speed on the run. Great technique there. Right back to the table. And straight down the middle, you see that line right there. Stayed in between the two outside lines. Just about as good as I've ever seen her do it. So we'll get that number for Jordan Child in a moment. Connor McLean in first place after six rotations. Been thinking about and talking about the Olympics for a long time. In fact, when she was 11 years old, she was on Steve Harvey's show. Watch, it's great. I understand that you are preparing for a big opportunity. What is that? Um, yes, the 2024 Olympics to win the all-around gold medal. That is terrific. 2016 that took place. And what you love about it, she didn't just say, thinking about the 2024 Olympics. <laughs> oh, she knew gold exactly. Medal. All Win around. Winning. Gold medal. Yes. Just a little bit cute, huh? Wow. Well, just a few years later, she told us pretty much that exact same thing when we got a chance to speak with her in training earlier this week. And that is not a pipe dream. That could happen. <laughs> was spectacular in night one had the highest score of 14.8 by quite a bit and you'll see why on this skill back with a full mm. a little off right there but let's save another big test right here huge tumbling combinations this is gigantic okay. just a little bit off and you know they pick up one foot and they make a balance adjustment those judges are writing on that white piece of paper that we just showed you and it just needs to take a little bit that was great a little bit of a breath here just a few signs of nerves Gorgeous. Yeah, she really does a lot of the very intricate stuff so well. So she was supposed to yeah. do a switch leap to a ring right there. Yeah. Seemed a little off and didn't go for it. Not her best routine. You see, she's a little flustered. A lot of little mistakes throughout the routine, but you know what? She stayed on the beam, yes, and that absolutely. was a huge test. But that 14-8 night one, the next highest score was a 13-8. But look at this. She just launches herself in the air, but... And really, I think, Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was almost pretty straight it, on the beam. It was a, just a sign of nerves. Yes, yeah. You know, she doubted herself a little bit right when she landed. Just needed to relax a little bit more. But she has come such a long way. Just about a year ago at a U.S. Classic, I believe, competition, she basically made herself sick <laughs> before she mounted the balance beam. Yeah, literally, yes. Different level of confidence now. She's crunching the numbers. In the last two rotations, last two events, if Connor and Chalice Jones got what they got on night one, it would be Connor winning by about two tenths of a point. But we'll see because the number might be lower there. Jordan Childs, 14 3 for Vault. And you see that execution, 9.3. That is huge. Come on, Come on, Caleb! 
And that's part of that college experience, too. <laughs> Absolutely, right? the cheering for each other. Uh huh. So a moment ago, Shailise Jones, while Connor McLean was on beam, she was on vault in second place heading into this rotation. She can fly here. Yeah. Really good. Has one of the best body positions on that vault. She stays board straight, and she's rewarded with that 9-5 execution. I think that's the highest we've seen so far. Guys, it's going to be close. That is a high number. And Shailise right behind Connor McLean heading into this rotation. You know, and it, it, they make it look so easy, but you got to remember that they're dealing with a lot of stuff. She actually really hurt her big toe in training here. And, you know, it's been a little bit iffy if she would compete at all throughout the entire competition. And there's that wrap. Yeah. You know, a lot of things on the line tonight. National Championship, first and foremost, apparatus titles, the event titles as well, but also making the national team. The top eight will make the national team if they have a score of 101 or better. Not to get lost in all the numbers here, but also the top two qualified for the world team selection camp, where eventually that world championship team will be named. And it'll be a five-person team at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. It was only four people. But you are allowed to bring specialists if you qualified them. The U.S. did. And so they had a total of six athletes. Sky Blakely getting set on balance beam in fifth place heading into this rotation. Night one, she had a major mistake, came off of the balance beam. But when she hit, she is really, really great on this event. High level of difficulty and just kind of goes from one element into the next beautiful mount. That's cool, right? Yeah, really cool. Has two really big acrobatic elements. Very, very solid. This is where she had problems. Night one. Backflip with a full twist. A little off, but was able to hold on to it here. There's another one, handspring to a front somersault. When you combine elements together without any type of break at all in gymnastics, men or women, it makes it infinitely more difficult. Judges are also looking for that constant movement from each skill into the next. It's a great recovery right yes, there. She was, was going to take a step and turn <laughs> it into a dance move. Yeah. The judges have obviously seen her routine dozens, hundreds of times, but technically could have gone away without oh. Oh, a deduction, but not there. Mm. Almost like she relaxed too soon. Yeah, she was a little bit over rotated on it and as she reached for the ground she kind of locked her legs a little bit and and stuck her hips out and kind of got a little bit stuck in the floor Landed a little bit on her heel instead yes, of the exactly yeah top of her feet mm. but much better than night one so in women's gymnastics if you take a step that is more than three ten uh, more than shoulder width apart it's three tenths of a point so take a look right here where she lands and you see her it's almost like her heel actually got caught on her other foot her ankle and no that that's multiple steps i think at least three right there but good fight you know some athletes could have just sat that dismount a lot down of athletes would have sat that down yeah, we talked about the handstands on the uneven bars, you guys, but it's split leaps and angles on balance beam that are such a big deal. Let's let's see if we can't get the protractor on this leap right there. You, oh, you got to hold it right at the extension. 
It's got to be 180 degrees. I'm going to hand it off to our, our favorite judge, Nasia. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was just a tad bit low. I have seen her do it better, and a lot of times in, in competition, they hold back just a yeah. little bit. Yeah, I actually thought, in real time, I thought that a lot of her leaps were a little bit conservative. Connor McLean, 14.1 on balance beam. And Jade Carey, this rotation on vault, and it took place short time ago. Here it is. Super difficult vault. That was what she was supposed to do for her first vault in the Olympic finals. And of course, she messed up her steps, but that was pretty good. Sixth place coming into this rotation. That number right there puts her in fourth in the all around. So Connor McLean has led since that first rotation. It's gotten close, though, maybe about a half a point or so. Back with the numbers on balance beam for Sky Blakely, 12.95. So it's going to drop her out of the top five yeah. overall. See that execution score, 7.15. Just really tough to take that kind of score at the national championships when everybody is pretty much neck and neck here. So as part of rotation seven overall, the two nights in play, Kayla DiCello, the 18-year-old from Maryland, earlier floor exercise she has a relatively new tumbling pass in her first tumbling run she'll do a double layout with a full twist we saw jade carey do one earlier great I just so enjoy watching her do gymnastics 13.65 the number on floor exercise so Kayla DiCello was in fourth gonna stay in that top five as you think about these numbers and you know, it's gonna be oh so close at the top coming down to this final rotation with Connor McLean and Shilise Jones and this is her coach, Kelly Hill, who is probably a little bit choked up emotionally right now. She has been at this meet since 1988, coached athletes like Dominique Dawes, Courtney Kupetz, Elise Ray, some of the all-time greats. She told me that her career ends when Kayla's elite career ends. And the plan wow. was, it was after this competition, she will not be putting her hat in the ring for a world championships, but I couldn't have more respect for this woman right here, Kelly Hill. Thank you, Kelly. Meanwhile, Leanne Wong, the 18-year-old from Overland Park, Kansas, who went to the world championships and won an all-around silver medal. Been dealing with a bit of an ankle injury here, only competing on a couple of events, including uneven bars. Just has gorgeous lines on all of the events, but beautiful handstand right there. 
This is a new element for her. Wow. Really great, right? Called the Bahardwaj, named after Olympian Mohini Bahardwaj. You make up half that stuff, don't you? <laughs> I know, it sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Beautiful form. Just yep. the dismount right here, double layout. There you go. That, that was tremendous. Not at 100%, not doing the all around, but pretty special. On uneven bars, 14 2 5 for Leanne Wong. And leads the bars. Remember, there are individual national championships on the line, so she leads the way in terms of that. Head to the final rotation here in Tampa next. So it comes down to the final rotation here in Tampa, the UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championships. It is not settled yet. Look at that lead. It's down to a half a point. Connor McLean, who will be on floor exercise. Shiley's Jones, who led to start night two, will finish up on uneven bars. And it's Jordan Childs, Jake Carey, Ticello rounding out the top five. Terry Gannon back with Tim Daggett and Nasty Lucan. Guys, how about this? Final rotation now. Who might have the edge here? Do you think? Well, you know, Shalice Jones. She actually is in second place, but she just had a gigantic number day one on the uneven bars. So, you know, in a lot of ways, if she does what she's capable, it's a lot of pressure. But if she handles the pressure, I think she could potentially come out on top. And you see her. This is just the warm up right here. She is. Basically right behind us <laughs> doing yeah. the warming up for the uneven bars, but this is what it's going to come down to as you mentioned It is now a mental game and a mental challenge. They both know that they could come out on top It's going to be who can mentally take this pressure and perform when the lights are on and it is go time You were referencing the scores on night one So let's take a look at those right now see how they match up in these two different events and Connor McLean, who's getting set, warming up over on floor. 13-9 on floor. Shilise Jones, 14-8-5. There's the difference. Now, it's still, and you, you both know this well, it comes down to doing what you're setting out to do in this final rotation. There's pressure right now. So we'll see. Shilise Jones, Connor McLean battling for that top spot at the national championships. Tight. One rotation left, national championship to be decided, and those individual event championships to be decided. Jordan Childs, third place after seven rotations, night one plus night two, ready to go on uneven bars. Yeah, she had the second biggest number, night one with a 14-2-5. So she is in contention. Oh, boy. Great patience. Big release down to the low bar. It's great. Another one right back up. I'm gonna start off your routine with a little hesitation like that. Takes a lot of mental strength to absolutely. I mean, that's... control, delete, and keep going. Yeah. That was just a little bit short. If we're being picky, which the judges are. Full twisting double right here. Wow. What a weekend for Jordan Childs. Guys, are you not amazed at the level of competition here? I know, I mean, Tokyo just in the rearview mirror. College, you come back, Harris is a couple years away. It's been outstanding. Absolutely, with, without a doubt, and yeah, I'm, I'm maybe most impressed with Jordan Childs. I just cannot believe how similar she looks to what she was at at her very best in Tokyo. And if not similar, I think even better in, the, in terms of the level of confidence and maturity and being a team leader out on that floor, cheering for every single athlete, the positivity. Yeah. But as you could tell, she was pretty emotional. After finishing that routine, beautiful. She just really has emerged as a leader, you know, in every shape of the word.
in third going into this final rotation. A little more than a point off the lead as we take you over the floor exercise. What a moment now for Connor McLean, the leader, but not by much, John. Yeah, it kind of comes full circle. We talked about the scoring at the beginning, risk versus reward. You mentioned that five tenths. Connor McLean starts at a 15.8 start value. Shylise Jones starts at a 16.3. That is a 5 tenth advantage for Shylise. This is going to be all about execution right here. Come down to that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Shylise can execute as well as anybody. Kind of reminds me of watching Nasty on bars. As good as there is in the world right now, in my opinion. But it's John. <laughs> I was waiting for the thank you. Yeah. I would but, have to say, though, floor exercise is traditionally evaluated a little more strictly there are just there are more places where the judges can take deductions on floor and they usually do but connor is fabulous here she'll show you right off the bat as well Connor no matter what the final result she has to be so proud of herself just within even the last month suffered a major fall in the uneven bars had a concussion was out of the gym came back to the gym was then sick for about a week just about a week and before she left for Tampa for the national championships. But yeah. Tim, what about that performance there with everything on the line? Well, there was a lot of really great tumbling. Super exciting. She had one turn towards the end of the routine. One of those spins we see on beam all the time, a wolf turn. So they make up things that you can have deductions on. One of them is precision, and she didn't show it on that, but this was great. So difficult, this opening tumbling pass. She does a double layout, completely stretched hips open with a full twist. Just incredible. Very nice leap, but watch this right here. It's called a wolf turn, and you have to not only complete it, but you gotta be precise. And she definitely fell out of that. So once again, this is where the judges are gonna be subjective. They could be. Hard to watch. Von Lorindo, <laughs> that's got to be difficult. Mm. And the weight now, it's got to be tough too. And, the weight, because you just go back to every single little thing and think, <laughs> I wish I could have just done this one more time. <laughs> Remember, Shailise Jones still to come on uneven bars. That's where she will finish up. And that half a point deficit, trying to make up. And there is the score 13 8 5 similar to night number one that execution just over eight Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. She definitely lost quite a bit on that some of the landings maybe chest down too low, but And Jordan Childs 14 1 on uneven bars so that Keeps her in second place for the moment, right behind Connor McClain. 
So it's going to come down to this routine on uneven bars. Shilise Jones, all the potential, the talent. Has it all come together this week? Two nights of competition in Tampa. Been so many people for a while now saying she's got the ability to win a national championship, to go to the Olympics, do great things. And right now, it's in her control. Well, she just got a major pep talk from Jordan Childs over at the chalk box just about 15 seconds ago. This is not an easy deal, though. It is a very complicated exercise, and she's got to let go of the bar a bunch of times. But it's certainly very doable. Beautiful handstand, just gorgeous lines. Now she has a huge combination coming up right here. If she does them all together, that was awesome. And now down to the low. And she can go right away. She can connect that. Didn't night one. Great handstand right there. There's that dismount. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Wow. Mm, down to the final moment. Yeah, the the last part of the last skill. And, you know, I'm sure most people know this, but that is a full one-point deduction. Really just kind of ran out of gas there at the very end. You two know what it's like to, to have it right there for you, and then you're rolling, and it comes down to that landing. Yeah, I think she doubted herself a little bit, personally. I think that she just on, was being a little bit over careful. We saw something very similar in, in the men's competition last night with Asher Hong on his last event, last dismount. thing about the national championship she had such an incredible day one of competition but you have to be consistent two days scores are combined started so well look at this just beautiful combination but it got a little funky right here actually too she's right near the end of her routine and legs come apart and she doesn't do that typically so she can't spot the ground until the very end. And she just opens up a little bit too early. And there's too much weight. Her center of gravity is too far in back of her heels. And when that happens, there's no way and to keep it on your feet. She would have needed a 14-3-5 and obviously Funny didn't get that. 13.6 into second in the all-around and it is Connor McQueen on top of the standings I know it's not completely done yet but there's a hug yes wow. <laughs> that's a pretty good hug a few weeks ago they weren't even sure she was going to be able to compete here at the national championships Jake Carey in this last rotation in fourth place And I'll tell you, she has really come into her own on this event. Struggled with bars her entire junior career. She says, I don't consider myself weak on bars anymore. And I have to agree. Still not her favorite event, but competing at the Olympic Games on this event, she, as I mentioned, was something she never thought she would have done. Gorgeous. 
Uh, she's doing great, but she does not have the level of difficulty in this routine and the execution, like right there, that is a very big deduction, missing that handstand. She's not gonna challenge for the top spot, but a tremendous job from this young lady right here. Jade Carey, an Olympic gold medalist. From the Tokyo Olympics, and the road has started now to Paris. And a solid week here in Tampa for Jade Carey. But Connor McLean, how about that? The 17-year-old came into the evening in second place, and after that opening rotation, took over the top spot, but it came right down to the end. Shailise Jones, not only the last routine, but the landing, the last element of the last routine. Connor McLean's gonna be a U.S. all-around champ. Talking to her teammates, her junior teammates. That had a pretty great competition earlier in the day as well. Yeah, go ahead. Junior national champion. From Woga, <laughs> right? Yep. You know, think, think about it. We showed that Steve Harvey video earlier and said, well, she was 11 years old and dreaming about, it's only six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but on the road to Paris now and not official yet as Fit the landing and Connor McLean realizing number one up on the leaderboard. Closing out the competition, it's been a fun week and celebration starting. Connor McLean, U.S. all around champ. Jade Carey, 13.45, the number on uneven bars. Gonna finish in the top five, Jade is. But a pretty good week for your parents, by the way. <laughs> not, <laughs> not too bad. Not, not only the winner here, but in all four divisions, junior, senior, the men, the women, so pretty successful week. Kayla DiCello finishing up in fifth place after the seventh rotation. Gonna take you back to look at how she finished up here on the second night on vault. Gorgeous. And Tim, you told a story um, about her coach as well. Yeah, Kelly Hill, who has been a part of USA Gymnastics forever, 1988, has been at every championship since 1988 till now. And once again, she said that when Kayla's elite career is over, so is mine. She did a lot for the sport of gymnastics in the United States, all over the world. Some really great athletes, Courtney Kupetz, Elise Ray. Kayla, another one of the world medalists, though. All around bronze medal in 2021. And going to finish in fourth here. Also finishing up, short time to go. Sky Blakely on floor exercise.
What a great finish there. Nice. You got it. Started with a fall yesterday on the balance beam, recovered well. And Especially guys, after last year. <laughs> as, we, as we watch her finish up, 13.452, we, we mentioned it. the world championship team, but also just the U.S. national nice team, the top team. eight, if their number was 101 or higher. And all eight right now finishing up, it is going to be the case. So um, nice. Sky Blakely, one of them, going to finish up in sixth place. I remember Lan Wong was said bit of an ankle injury only doing uneven bars and balance beam. Here's the effort to finish up on beam. She came into this competition with a bit of a tweaked ankle and then in her landing off beam in day one kind of aggravated it a bit. Coaches said we are going to absolutely err on the side of caution. Rightfully so. As important as the national championships are, as you mentioned, Terry, national team is on the line, national titles are on the line. The future is even more important. Yeah. Not I, worth the risk. Yeah, if, if she, you know, she's, she had her leg events let yet to come, vaulting and floor exercise, and you can't do those kind of crazy flips and twists unless you're healthy. Beautiful routine, and there's just the dismount right here. Struggled just a little bit, night one. She'll petition to be part of that selection camp, and I think it'll be granted. Silver medalist in the all-around from the World Championships last time. 13.4, Leanne Wong. Well, it's official now, U.S. all-around champ. Connor McLean with Suni Lee, the Olympic all-around champ. We'll hear from the champ. Back with a look at the final results here at the UFOS U.S. Gymnastics Championships. It is Connor McLean breaking through with the win. The U.S. all-around champ, Shilise Jones, came down to that last apparatus. In second, Jordan Childs rounding out the top three. And the winner, Connor McLean, is with Zora. Connor, your first U.S. Championships as a senior, and you come out on top. Given everything that you've been through as a person and as a gymnast, how satisfying is it to accomplish what you set out to do? This is honestly one of the most amazing things in my career so far. It's so unreal, and I honestly just can't believe it still. It seems so crazy. And you couldn't even train as much as you normally would leading up to this because of a concussion. What did you learn about yourself this weekend? Um, just to give it all I got at all times and just to work hard every day in the gym and then obviously it comes out in a good way, so. Olympians, Jade Carey, Suni Lee came up to you after it was solidified that you were going to win this event. What did they say to you and what did that mean to you that they embraced you in that moment? They're such a big inspiration to me and they're honestly great friends to me too, so just having them here and them congratulating me and just having them on the competition floor, Jade and Jordan, is just so nice and so inspiring. You also have your family here with you. How have they helped you along your gymnastics journey? Oh my gosh, they've helped me in so many ways. When my dad passed, they were the only people there for me and that is just so nice to have. And have them here is crazy too. So how do you celebrate a national championship, Connor? Um, definitely with my friends tonight. My sister left or else I would be with her. So just hang out with all my friends. So we always play back you on the Steve Harvey show, right? <laughs> saying, you know, everybody probably brings it up saying that you want to go to the Olympics in 2024. How is this a step towards that, this win? This is just a big step forward, I would say, just as my first senior championships and just getting back out on the competition floor after a few months is really great and a really boost of confidence for me. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Terry. Dora, thanks. Yeah, what a boost of confidence it must be. We'll talk more about that as we continue and wrap things up from the national championships here in Tampa. complete here at the national championships it is Connor McLean 
who wraps up. Guys, what does this do for an athlete like Connor McClain now? A lot. A whole heck of a lot. You know, she, so, she told Steve Harvey when she was 11 years old, she wasn't just going to go to the Olympics. She was going to win the Olympic Games. And this is charting her on course for that. The whole world has been watching Connor McClain for many years, and her time has come. National champion here in Tampa. Reminder coming up next here on NBC is America's Got Talent. Some kind of week here as we all look ahead to Paris 2024. And Connor McLean wins the all around title for Nastia Timms on Roethlisberger and Zora Stevenson. I'm Terry Gannon. So long, everyone, from Tampa.